most of the animals. It just isn't. I think that's a good way to put it without throwing shade at anybody, really. However, I I think everybody in this docuseries has shade thrown at them for very, 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 very important and legitimate reasons. So, I think that's before I get to um, into this, I do want to say that, that I don't want this video to come off that I am taking anybody's side, that I think anybody is better than anybody, um, or that I think Joe Exotic is like this wonderful human being or anything of that nature. Um, besides the tigers and the people that have suffered such as Travis Maldonado and um, Saf who lost his arm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and say that these characters, as cast of characters, Doc Antle, Jeff, Hello, um, Joe Exotic, and Carol Baskin um, are should be looked up to, should be admired, are wonderful people because I think that's for the most part that's not true um so I feel like that was a really really long intro um but yeah so I was super you know like everybody when the documentary dropped I was like oh I gotta watch this especially being somebody that was raised around tiger people um they are a very, very special type of people, and I think that's the first thing that comes up in the documentary, is, like, the monkey people are like this, and the this people are like that, but then tiger people are crazy. <laughs> crazy. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to do a move on, move on, move on. Maybe I'll put a little time, 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 time time clamp, time stamp right here if you don't want to hear me ramble about um, all of that, but I think it's important to just kind of note, especially the fact that I don't want this video to come across as like, go girl basket, go Joe Exotic, yay Doc Antle, it's like not about that at all, at all. This docuseries is so problematic and has so many issues and the people So we're just gonna sit here and we're going to talk 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 about what happens not necessarily completely in the Tiger King docuseries but most predominantly 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 the feud between Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin. Every time I say her name, I want to say it like Joe because it's like in my brain, like Carol Baskin, Carol Baskin, Carol Baskin. Uh, so yeah, I have some notes um, just to keep me on track. But I've probably seen the docuseries three times. It's really 
sad to see just animals um, put in positions like this. It is really sad and it can be triggering and upsetting. Totally understand. Um, so I wrote a little blurb. Um, so this docu-series launched on Netflix right around the time that many of the U.S. was going into this big quarantine phase. Um, so like about two weeks ago. Uh, Joe Exotic is a wild cat enthusiast who owned uh, big cats and other animals at the GW Zoo in Oklahoma. Now, this docuseries follows the many, many dramas that encapsulate the lives of big cat owners, big cat zoo owners, um, and this wild, dramatic, intense dispute between Joe Exotic and animal rights activist and owner of Big Cat Rescue, Carol Baskin. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit, 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 about the arrest and indictments of Joe Exotic for the murder for hire plot of rescue owner Carol Baskin. So in November of 2017, uh, Joe Exotic or Joseph Allen Schriebvogel Maldonado Passage I might be missing another name in there um, was attempting to hire a person to murder a Jane Doe. So at the time that this, I'm sure, in the area and to this fan base of Joe Exotic had, I'm sure it was very apparent as to what or who this Jane Doe was. Um, but the initial reports in the papers um, and that I was able to locate said Jane Doe in Florida. At the time of this arrest, um, according to the indictments, um, he gave the hired man $3,000 to travel to Florida and carry out the murder of Jane Doe. A second indictment alleged, alleged, <laughs> alleged that Joe Exotic was repeated, repeatedly asking another unnamed, unnamed, named person to kill Jane Doe. Sorry guys, I don't know what words are apparently right now. Okay. Now, in December 2017, Joe was put in contact with an FBI agent and um, this was an undercover FBI agent to discuss the details of Joe's um, excuse me, to discuss the details of this murder plot for this Jane Doe in Florida. And while Jane Doe was never harmed, Exotic was arrested September, 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 September 7th in Gulf Breeze, Florida. At the time of these alleged crimes, uh, Joe was running to be the libertarian candidate for the governor of Oklahoma. This was after a very eccentric, very strange, failed run for president as an independent. So, as stated in the Netflix documentary, um, there's an interview with Joe's campaign manager. That's what, I'm, that's what I was looking for. And he said it was a total, 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 and complete publicity, publicity, publicity stunt. Okay. In 2019, Joe Exotic was convicted of 17 federal charges of animal abuse. So seven of those violations were about the Lacey Act and nine, the Endangered Species Act. Um, were uh, murder for hire attempts to kill Carol Baskin. And 
he is currently serving 22 years in federal prison. So these skeletons of tigers that had been shot and buried were found on the zoo property when authorities were going through the property of the GW Zoo. Now, at the time when this investigation was taking place before his subsequent arrest, Joe Exotic was posting on Instagram that he and his husband were in Belize, when in reality, they were on a beach in Florida. So, a little bit of background on Joe Exotic. Oh, my nose really itches. Okay. Uh, so, a little background. Uh, he was born March 5th, 1963 in Kansas. He was outed to his parents around the time he was 13, um, and at one point his father, um, wanted him to, highlighter is coming off my notes, wanted, um, him to shake his hands in front of his mother, saying that he wouldn't attend, um, their funeral, and, you know, super sad shit. Um, so he then attempted suicide a few years later driving his vehicle into a bridge now it was in florida during the time of his therapy recovering from this horrible accident that he encountered exotic animals for the first time mostly big cats um and it was a dream of Joe's brother, Gerald Wayne, to work with animals, and the two opened a pet store in Arlington, Texas, in 1986. Then, in 1997, Wayne, Gerald Wayne, was in a fatal car accident, and um, this inspired Joe to not only go around and engage with young people about um, the effects of drug abuse um, and he did use um, cats during these assemblies as well um, so not only did he do this in honor of his brother but he created the GW Zoom Gerald Wayne Zoom and for over 16 years, he operated and owned the zoo. Um, and it was very wi widely known for its big cats, cub petting exploits um, that incredibly angered um, probably other animal rights activists, but mostly caught the attention of Carol, 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 Carol Baskin of Big Cat Rescue. Now, Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin have known each other for quite some time um, through the Big Cat's, you know, animal web. Um, and not going to lie, I had a thought, just like a little grain of thought. My, as I mentioned earlier, I grew up with a family member that owned a zoo game farm situation and they had big cats and a part of me wondered um even though i was in upstate new york cats were being sold and shipped and i mean that, that was going on a little bit of everywhere i just i kind of wondered if maybe um this family member knew these types of people at the time when they had their big cats. Um, I don't know. I just had a, I just had a thought. I was like, I wonder if this family member knows them or knew of them at the time in the 90s. So Joe Exotic was married to John Finley. Travis Maldonado, and then later Dylan Passage. Um, his current husband is Dylan Passage. John and Travis were both his husbands at the same time until John had left, um, left him for a woman.
woman that worked at the zoo. They had a baby together. He seems happy. Um, didn't really seem to cause too much turmoil, at least not that I saw. I don't know. On the um, docuseries, I mean, I'm sure he was upset, um, but you know. And then in October 2017, Travis died in a really horrific accident involving a firearm, which happened in front of uh, Joe Exotic's campaign manager. Um, and they show this event in the docuseries, and I literally, <laughs> I like gasped with the, the, the gentleman that saw this, like, yeah, it was, it was spooky, it was tough, it's definitely, whew. um, and you can't help but feel really bad, um, especially because this person, <sighs> mentally, um, but also probably wasn't being treated the best by their husband. So, now, okay, so this is where I'm going to kind of transition to Carol for a little bit, um, but I want to talk about what's going on currently. So, currently, Joe is serving his time. Um, he has recently, as of like, what, a week ago or something, filed a $94 million lawsuit, um, and he is seeking pardon from Donald Trump, um, and he's also suing Jeff Lowe, I believe, or trying to sue Jeff Lowe for stealing his suit, essentially, and also baiting him to commit the murder for hire plots. Um, also, as of what, last night or yesterday, I saw various articles that, um, said he was positive for COVID-19 as the prison he is in is very rampant. I mean, a lot of prisons are dealing with this pandemic, um, a lot. Um, so I saw a few articles that said that, yes, indeed, he was sick or tested positive for this. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about Carol Bay Skin. So, Carol was born June 6th, 1961 on an Air Force base in Texas. Um, she came from a pretty Christian family. Um, and when she was sexually assaulted as um, a teen, it kind of ostracized her from her family. They victim blamed her. They, you know, believed that if that happened to you, you were asking for it, which is terrible. So, she left home at 15, and at 17, she would meet and marry Michael Murdoch, and they would have a daughter together. I believe her name is Julie. I could be wrong. Um, so Michael was very abusive, according to Carl, Carl Byskin, and around 20 years old, she left him and began a relationship with a very older gentleman, Don Lewis, who was born, I think he was born in like 1939 or 1938 or something. So yeah, he was significantly older than her and they both left their marriages. Now, Lewis was a wealthy real estate um, agent person in the 80s um, and for most of his career. That's how he made his money. Um, along with co-founding Wildlife on Easy Street with Carol Baskin. So they both um, would find this together. And in the early 90s, they would purchase, purchase their first tigers and lynx. And, uh, yeah. So... I'll get into that later. <laughs> so things became a little volatile between Don and Carol around 1997. The two were breeding and selling cats in the 90s. Um, so it's suspected that possibly what happened to create such turmoil in their marriage in the late 90s might have been that Carol realized, you know, 
you know, the incredibly dangerous environmental impacts of this breeding and selling. Um, and perhaps she began to disagree with Dawn. Um, I think some people maybe might not, might have forgot that, or maybe didn't realize that, but yeah, Carol was also partaking in the things that she now speaks out against, um, which is great, but I, I think it's just important to note. Uh, so in July 1997, um, Dawn filed a restraining order against Carol, saying that, um, she threatened to kill him, but it was rejected. Now, Lewis had asked her for a divorce multiple times, according to witnesses, according to his daughters, according to his lawyer. Uh, he was afraid of her, and he wanted to leave. Now, in the days before his disappearance, he bought a, Lewis bought a plane ticket to Costa Rica, where he visited once a month. Um, Carol said that he was doing things with animals in Costa Rica as well, because uh, regulations weren't as strict, um, and she didn't like that, and allegedly he had a girlfriend there as well, or maybe girlfriends, I don't know. Now, August 18th, 1997, around 6am, was when Lewis disappeared, but it took a few days for police to realize that he was missing and to catch on to this. Um, his financial manager was actually looking for him, um, and when she got a hold of Carol, she was like, you need to call the police. And Carol was like, I do. Which is strange. But on August 20th, 1997, uh, his white Dodge was found at the airport 40 miles away from the sanctuary. Now, Carol would inform authorities, she talked about it in the documentary, uh, that he his license was suspended to be a pilot and he would fly, almost said drove, <laughs> he would fly illegally all the time, and um, he would fly under the radar so people couldn't pick him up and he was not reporting his flights, so who knows. His, um, one of his lawyers, I believe, though, would go on to say that there's absolutely no way that he could have taken one of his planes to Costa Rica because it would have taken it would have done like four fuel stops and there's and there's no way that there would be that much there would be that much space where they couldn't fit if he stopped for fuel four times like they would have been able to have tracked where he was and where he went by now right right okay does that make sense so currently there is no evidence pointing which way in the disappearance of Don Lewis he was declared um dead five years and a day after his disappearance uh Carol Baskin received a death certificate but it is widely suspected that Carol knows something now the big theories are that um Don Lewis perhaps faked his death and disappearance. He was a millionaire. Um, so he did have the means to create this disappearance and this vanishing act and go to Costa Rica. But um, that's so debatable because of the fuel stops and things like that. Um, but there's also a theory that perhaps he was pushed out of a plane that someone killed him by pushing him out of the plane on the way to Costa Rica. There was an accident in the plane that could have killed him as well, like an actual plane accident. Uh, Carol was quoted in the docuseries to say, you know, if he went into the Gulf, nobody would find him. <laughs> and then there is this huge theory uh, that's uh, Joe Exotic completely believes uh, to the point that, you know, like Eminem, he created a diss track and music video called Here Giddy Giddy. Here Giddy 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 Giddy. Where a um, lookalike Carol Baskin in the music video was feeding meat to a tiger that was supposed to be the body of Don Lewis. 
so that's a very popular um, theory. Um, Carol refutes this by saying, you know, well, there would have there would have been bones and things like this. Is that true? I don't know. Um, Joe Exotic and other uh, tiger enthusiasts will go on to say that you know, a tiger stomachs are so acidic that they could just swallow a human whole probably and digest everything. Um, another theory is that she disposed of his body on the grounds of the sanctuary in a sewer pipe. And again, a Doe Exotic would use his reality TV platform um, to talk about that theory as well. Um, he also would, Doe Exotic would also do terrible things to effigies of Carol Baskin on this TV show as well. It's just blows my mind. Um, so in 1998, she, Carol Baskin, told people that she wished that she could disprove all of this fanfare and theories about her doing something to her husband, but without a body, she's unable to prove herself innocent. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, she said something like that in People Magazine. Um, and around that time, too, she began to threaten Don Lewis's family, allegedly, according to the family. Um, okay, sorry guys, my phone freaked out, but I think we're okay. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so, in case of Don Lewis, despite, you know, certificate it is still an open case so since the documentary dropped on Netflix there has been a huge amount of tips coming through to the county authorities and a lot of general concern and interest about the disappearance of Don Lewis and a lot of pressure being put on the county to do some more follow-up investigation currently Doc Ansel and Jeff Lowe are claiming Tiger King was spun for pure drama and entertainment and they're both not really pleased with how they were portrayed um I find that kind of funny but uh this is a quote directly from Doc Ansel this is a salacious outrageous ride through a television show produced to create drama and tie you into some crazy train wreck story between the feud of Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin and the meltdown that ensued between two people who are who both are far too close to murder themselves and now Baskin also feels uh, wrongly portrayed in this docu-series uh, she feels that she was making a big cat version of blackfish and that is how this entire docu-series was portrayed to her uh, so she felt kind of coerced and betrayed by the writers and producers however the writers and producers have vehemently come forward and been like no no no, no. carol knew exactly what we were talking about what we were covering what we were looking into um she knew very well and she was completely in her right mind and understanding and at space um Park 
Park was raided in 2019, and while I can't find appropriate information, I don't think that information is public quite yet as to why the park was raided. Doc Antle said it was because of three adult tigers that he received from a Virginia zoo, and that zoo was under speculation and investigation for animal cruelty, so that's why his zoo was raided and nothing was found and no arrests were made, which is true. A woman, however, was interviewed uh, in this docu-series that sheds light on some very disturbing behavior and things that were taking place at her time at Doc Antle's Zoo and Sanctuary about how young women were brought in to work and uh, had horrible living conditions. Um, she mentions cockroach infest infested horse stables um, and to be treated better and with more respect. Um, you had to create a sexual relationship with Doc Ansel or give yourself more to Doc Ansel and um, make yourself more aesthetically pleasing and beautiful and things of that nature. So uh, very problematic, very predatory things were happening at that zoo. And she does go on in later interviews to say, like, I'm not saying it's a 100% sex cult, but something isn't right. Something's very predatory there. And, um, yeah, I 100% like believe her, um, her story and to share that. And currently she is dealing with some backlash about speaking up about that, um, which is sad, you know, and she's a little concerned and a little fearful. Um, now <laughs> a little tidbit about Doc Antle. Um, and Jeff Lowe, in all honesty, I just, I don't like them. I don't like them. Uh, and um, Doc Antle, especially um, someone that calls himself Lord, a man that calls, I, I don't know. <laughs> I got some problems with that. Uh, and I'm sure many, many, many of you felt the same way I did watching this documentary when Jeff Lowe would make comments about pussy and big pussy and little pussy and the cats and like you were just like cringe and then Doc Ansel when he is showing the interviewer where his wives live he's not like oh Roshni I think is one of his wives name lives here my other wife named blah, blah. like the way he speaks about these women is so fucked truly and i'm trying to be as neutral as possible in telling you guys what happened and the story and these are facts and things that happened um but yeah something something's rotten with doc Candle, i believe um so anyways yeah when he's uh, driving through his compound with the interviewer, he's like, my, he doesn't even say my, he says the Italian one or my Italian one lives here. And then my blonde one with big teeth lives here. And I'm like, ah, oh, cringe, 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 cringe. Uh, so that's my take on those people. And, you know, Joe Exotic, very cringy as well. I mean, come on, like, clearly. Um, but, even situations with Carol Baskin just have me like, ah. So, yeah, I don't know what you guys thought. I'm just making sure I finished reading all my notes. I don't know what you guys thought of this docu-series. Um, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, pretty strange, pretty bizarre. Uh, and these things are still unfolding. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I also just think, though, that the importance, the true, 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 true important thing about this um, docu-series is that we need to protect animals and big cats from people like this. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, yeah. This was a long one. Honestly, I could have talked about this forever. Maybe I can do another type of video on this because I truly 
this docuseries so much and was so intrigued by it that I would totally, 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 totally do something talking about it again. So, I mean, if you have any questions, if you aren't sure about something, if, you know, I, I'm totally happy doing some more research and fact-checking and things like that, or talking more about certain people that we didn't talk about, there's plenty of people we could be looking into from the documentary. So if anything interests you, let me know. And yeah, be sure to like, 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 and comment and subscribe. I know the commenting has been really funky and really weird. Um, and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, the best thing we can do to combat that though, I think is just keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. And also please don't think that I am not, 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 Please don't think that I'm ignoring you because I'm not. Um, sometimes when I get on my desktop, I'm able to see more comments than I was on my phone. It's a work in progress. We're all figuring it out.